Hi, and thanks so much for joining me. Today we are talking all about Guerlain. So if you'd like to see that, please keep watching. Thank you again for returning, and if you are new, welcome. Today we are talking, like I said, about Guerlain. We're going to be going through three different looks using the products that I have. Um, I picked up a couple of new things like these, <laughs> and I also have a few bronzers and a palette, and then some meteorites that we'll be playing with, oh, and a lipstick. And I also threw in some of my go-to eye products just to take us through different phases of looks, going from more casual to something like this. So we're just gonna try on the products and talk about them along the Let's way. Let's go ahead and start with this. It is the Tinted Skin Care Jelly, and this one's in medium. I think I picked this up because I had not really explored this before, and it reminds me of a product I want to say in the 80s that they had that was kind of like this. I'll show you what it looks like. I don't use self tanner, but if those of you who do, this might remind you of like a self tanner type of substance. Instead of putting it all over my face, I'm going to use it more like a bronzer, which is what I've been kind of playing around with it as. You can see it right there. It does have warmth to it. And I like this because it's like a no makeup makeup bronzer, <laughs> but I'll do one side first and then you can see the difference. So I'm just putting it in the places I would put bronzer. So if I wanted to look like I had a tan, I would put it all over my face. But in this case, I wanted to do just part of my face so we could use the foundation stick as well. Okay, so here's the difference. It's a bronzer and then I don't have any on this side yet. And then let's see if we can see the difference looking straight on. If you're looking for a really natural type of bronze, I think this is a really interesting way to go. A little bit on my forehead. This is where, like these areas, right where it borders my hair, is where the main difference between my skin, actually, like my regular skin color, and then it gets lighter because it's my scalp here. So that's why I like to go in with something a little bit deeper so the transition's not so obvious. And then we're just going to put foundation really where I need it. Very close to the color I would tan, but just a little bit warmer. I can almost go a little bit gray with my tan sometimes, so this just brings back that warmth. Refreshing and translucent, so I think you could see it was translucent. It's that jelly texture, melts into skin to deliver a natural sun-kissed look. So I haven't seen if this runs or anything in the heat, but so far it's not obvious that I'm wearing makeup when I look at it in the mirror. It intensely hydrates the skin and leaves it feeling soothed all day long. So when we do get to go back, you know, on vacation, <laughs> um, it will be a nice thing to have, especially after sun. It infuses a touch of sunlight as the days go by, leaving the skin bright and radiant. It's tiare flower fragrance leaves a gentle scent on the skin. That's what I'm smelling, slightly floral, um, but floral in a fresh way, instantly sweeping you away to an exotic far off paradise. You could even use this now if you want to, to look like you have a little bit more sun than you've been getting, like me, I haven't been getting any sun, but I think that's why my darker areas are looking better. So this, these dark areas look really good. It also has vitamin C and E. It moisturizes the skin without leaving it feeling sticky, which it doesn't, it doesn't feel sticky at all. I don't think I would wear it all over my skin just because, you know, this whole situation here, but I think if you want to look like you have a tan and want, don't want to feel it and you don't use a self tanner, this might be something interesting to look at. So we're going to go in with this foundation. This is the Terracotta. It's not new. So I picked this up because I wanted to do a Guerlain kind of roundup and see what I had and I was missing a foundation. So I picked this up in, you might be surprised what color, but light. So I was looking at the swatches online and they looked so deep. I don't know if the range is like super limited or what you found, um, but this is the shade light. It actually works okay. So we're going to put it in the center here and you can kind of see. Now, this is one of those products I thought, why didn't I pick this up earlier? Because I really like the formula. Oh, you can see my fingers are a little bit, you can see what happens with my fingers. With the other product, it's a little bit tan, so you can see the difference. <laughs> so we're going to just take a foundation brush, a Sado, and we're gonna stipple it a little bit into those pores like usual. And you can see, this is the right shade for me. I just went in really lightly though. And we are really going to just put foundation right in here. 
So that is the coverage. Really thin layer, but you can see right away. So it goes through like a series of fragrances as you apply this. Top notes reveal a joyful sparkling accord of orange blossom and exotic fruit. Then it takes over with feminine notes of jasmine and ylang-ylang, and then plays off the lightness of the chiari flower. It talks about vanilla and woody notes. So there's a lot of like thought into the fragrance, although, although I can't say there's that much going on there. It's a very faint but I can pick up on the, like, I really like the jasmine scent and the vanilla. I think that's what sticks out the most. It's a second skin result, immediate beautiful skin effect, and it's lightweight. So I, that's what I found with this. I think this one's a good one for oilier skin types because I'm mostly oily in the center here. And I didn't add foundation to my nose either. So just in these areas, right here, here, and my forehead. And it's not even too light for my forehead. But we're gonna go in and bronze later. I have so many like powdery products from Guerlain. So we're gonna take the Clay de Peau 305 just for the eyes. It's a warm like pinky peach color, a little bit of shimmer. But I've been using this as a really subtle liner for the top as well, and just a little wing. It's so soft and easy to use, and I love this shade because it's so subtle. So really great for those online meetings where you want to look like you have some kind of definition to your eyes, but not like you try too hard. <laughs> In case you have any redness, this does a nice job without adding too much definition. This has been one of my favorite eyeliners that I picked up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is conceal, clay de peau, we'll conceal, we'll powder um, with Charlotte Tilbury, number one under the eyes. Then I'll go in with the Hummingbird <laughs> Collection Powder, of course, Shantikai. I'll be right back. So I just tight lined it a little bit with the Chanel Eyeliner in Espresso. Let's go ahead and put on some blush. I'm going to use the Terracotta palette and I'm going to try my best to just get this here because I don't want too much shimmer because it does bring out a bit of texture and I'm not using my Ray Morris brushes because they need to be cleaned <laughs> even without the highlighter though this blush has a bit of shimmer to it so since there is some shimmer in here I'll probably go in and powder on top of this blush right here just to take away that texture that I'm seeing I don't know if you can see it, but I can, I can clearly see that it's bringing it out, but I do want that color there at the same time. We'll go ahead and powder that in a little bit. I'm just going to take my lipstick that I picked up recently. I can't remember the name of this one, but it has like the marbleized finish on it. This is in 007. It's one of the newer formulas and it has a really pretty shape to it. So I thought this at first was just for, you know, for looks, but actually because it has that nice edge on it, it makes application much easier. It does make it easier to apply like this. And at first glance, this doesn't look like it would be hydrating, but it's quite hydrating. That is one of my favorite new lipsticks. I love that shade. It has a nice neutral balance to it. So I think it's very easy for a lot of people to wear this shade. It's not too warm, it's not too cool. It's kind of right in the middle and it's not very deep and it's not very light either. What we're gonna do next is kind of ramp this up and get a little bit more interesting and we'll start adding layers of bronzer and some of the other powders so you can see how they perform. We're gonna quickly intensify the eyes using a couple of favorites. Well, this one is a favorite, like a lifetime favorite, I wanna say, all-time favorite. It's the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick Eyeshadow in Copper. So we're gonna put that all over the lid, right on top of what we've already done. So I think you can quickly see why I like this so much. It's easy to use and the results are beautiful. It performs better than the other eyeshadow sticks of hers as well. They are not created equally. Some are better than others. This is one, if not the best one. I'm gonna say this is the best one of hers. So we're gonna take another one of them in Coco. I can't remember, was I going to get rid of this? So if I said I was going to get rid of this in the last declutter, or did I say I was gonna hang on to it? It might've been a last minute, let me hang on to this one. So we're gonna use that right now. We're just gonna go on the outer V and it's really that simple. Just to kind of pat it in place. I love to use my fingers with these eyeshadow sticks. I actually find it's harder to work with a brush with these, for me at least. So there's a difference between this and that eye. Really, really quick though. I hope you could see how quick that was. So I'm not really doing anything in the crease here. 
my crease can be an issue, so sometimes I'll just not even worry about that area. We're gonna add powder bronzers. Now you saw in the terracotta, this contour is more like a bronzer on me. And in the summer, that's more like I can use that as a powder. So we're going to put these two side by side because the only real difference I've seen in terms of the description is that one has kaolin and one does not. So we've got the matte sculpting powder in medium and we also have the sun trio in deep. You can see that their medium and their deep are very similar. <laughs> So the medium in this one is not at all this shade at all. It's much lighter. We're gonna go ahead and apply this on this side and this on this side. So you can see the difference, but really this is geared more towards if you have an oilier, oilier complexion, this is supposed to stay in place better because of that kaolin. So I'm gonna take two different Ray Morris brushes. They're a little bit of a different shape. This one is the Flawless Shader. So we're gonna go in with this Sculpting powder with a kaolin on this side. And then we're gonna take the other one. I love their bronzers, any of their bronzing type items. And this is described as a matte finish. We're gonna go in with the Sun Trio. I'm just gonna take this ultimate cheekbone brush. It's a little bit of a different shape. And we're going to just swirl all of those colors together and apply it on this side. And I don't like foundation on my neck, so we're just gonna bronze on my neck. I don't like the feeling, it just bothers me, so I don't put foundation on my neck. So there's a difference. I don't know how well blended that is. I don't have a mirror to this. Let's see, how well blended is that? So they look virtually the same to me. I don't see that much of a difference, but I think the difference is in the performance based on your skin type. So. If you're wondering about the difference between the two, like I was wondering for the longest time, um, it is mainly that ingredient, but color-wise, they look, I mean, they look pretty much the same. So if that helps. If you have this one, the Trio one, then you don't need to get this other one, unless you have oily skin and you have trouble with it. But I can see how in a warmer climate, something like this would work really well. Okay, that looks like I have a lot of bronzer. I assure you, I don't think it looks that much in real life, does it? Okay, yeah, maybe it does. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go over that with powder, but I just wanted to, that was like for demonstration purposes, I wouldn't normally go in that deep with it. We're gonna take it up a notch. Let me see if this is still available before I talk about this. This is a product I never actually showed online. This is the Laura Mercier Caviar Chrome Veil Liquid Eyeshadow. This one is in sparkling black, it's called Night Sky. Looks green online though. Um, I didn't use this on camera because the pink one, I think it was Gilded Fresco, it, there was something in it that stung my eyes, like the skin on my eyes, so I didn't um, ever do a look with that, but I thought we could use this one. This one doesn't bother my eyes, so I'm gonna apply it all over my eyelid. Yeah, if you know of any good Guerlain um, eyeshadows, let me know, I just haven't seen anything interesting. So we're just gonna add it on here, I'm gonna tap it on, all just layered on. This reminds me of that Chanel formula um, that I have, but this one has some visible particles of shimmer in there, but it's really pretty. It's more like a khaki green on me, though, I wanna say, than like an actual like black and gold combination. This is one of those eye shadows that stays for until you remove it. This is a really giant brush for this purpose because look how narrow that is. So we're gonna just highlight with this. Now this is not my favorite highlighter. It's a little bit chunky. This is a Kevin O'Quan um, fan brush, but I prefer a fan brush because it doesn't layer on highlighter so heavily. I was gonna powder, but I want to go in with these. So I've mixed medium and golden to get to this, um, but this is what's left of the golden. So you can see really how deep this gets. And we're going to also go in with this color from the holiday, this is holiday collection one, the meteorites, um, the Golden Land. We're going to go in with that in the middle of my face. Whew, there's always so much dust. So I'll do one side. Okay, so it doesn't perfect these pores, if you're wondering. <laughs> I'm just trying to stipple it in there because sometimes like doing this makes it worse. This does have a fragrance to it. Let's see, is that helpful? Well, actually, let's see. Let's buff it in a little and see if that helps. You just have to be careful because it's rubbing away my concealer right now. I don't know if you can tell. It's rubbing away my concealer, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that in a little bit. Um, 
but it looks pretty on the rest of my face. And then let's go in with the deeper one. We're going to apply that to the exterior. So I'll do this side first. Yeah, so someone was saying they didn't notice anything with their skin. It is really subtle, but I, I mean, it is visible to me. I can tell when someone's wearing this during the day, especially because there's a certain reflective quality that is very specific to this product. It's more of an ethereal kind of finish though than the Hourglass. Hourglass is more like a glow. This is more like ethereal. I'm gonna have to fix that. Can you see? Like, I can see. I'm gonna go ahead and intensify with Marine on the eyes. Just gonna focus on the order, order counter. I'm just gonna focus on the outer corners here. I'm gonna go ahead and fix this powder and then we're gonna spray a little bit. So let me just fix this powder really fast because I've got that the little darkness. So I went in with my Clay de Peau. So that's what I like about the Clay de Peau concealer. If I haven't mentioned it before, I can put it in after I powder and then I powdered again on top of it with a Chantecaille and add a, a little bit more blush. And then I went in with a little bit more of the meteorites. So that's what I've done here. It's not the most perfect finish when I do it, but I can do that in a pinch. So that's, I just wanted to let you know, that's what I did here. And I do want to finish up with a spray because I'm trying to do little excerpts of me using the spray so you can see them because I'm doing a, um, I'll be doing a compilation of my facial sprays that I have. Um, so this one is a Smith & Colt Invisible Powder setting spray. Spray six to eight inches from face to set makeup. It's to refresh and to mattify. So already if you're oily, this might be something you're more interested in than say something like the hourglass. Go ahead and apply. And this one feels like air. Let me just see if anything happened here. Let's try that again. It feels a little bit like, um, so when the substance comes out, it feels like, you know, that spray that you have to clean electronics. I don't remember the name of that, but it's, it's that cold feeling. So it does have a little, like a veil of powder, which is what I like about this one so far. I really like this one, but I just wanted to show you, let me add a little bit more. Yeah, there's not really droplets or anything that you can feel, but you can feel that there's like a colder air coming out. So that's how I know there's a little bit of substance coming out. I can see on my face too, it is just like a, it's like a veil. Let's just do a quick rundown. The Tinted Skincare Jelly, I think is a fun thing to have. It's for the people who don't like foundation and especially in the summer, I don't like to put any foundation on my face because it's just so hot. But I would be willing to put something like this on. I wish they had this in a non like, Maybe I need to look the lighter one so it just evens out the skin tone but doesn't give too much color. I don't need it to look tan. I think I look pretty tan anyway. Um, but if you like some color and you don't like foundation, you might wanna try this because you might like it. And also if you don't like self tanning, that looks very complicated to me. Um, so this is like an easier version that's more temporary. So I would try that if you're interested. It's kind of a fun product to have. This foundation is really amazing. I was really surprised at it. I thought it was just gonna be like any other foundation, but it's very oddly lightweight for a stick foundation. Sometimes stick foundations can be really heavy, um, but this is quite light, lighter than some of the liquid foundations I have. So I really like this, especially if you have like oilier, oilier skin, you might like this because sometimes um, stick foundations are a little too emollient, a little too heavy for this front part of my face but I really am enjoying this. Actually, for my everyday makeup, I've been doing a combination of this, like this is a new routine now, a combination of this just on the exterior and this I put here and I even use it as concealer. It's not the best for concealer. If you were going to look really closely, you could see there are particles, but in a pinch, it works really well just to kind of even everything out. And it does feel really lightweight. So I was surprised at this. I did, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't pick it up when everyone else picked it up, but I didn't. <laughs> then when we talk about these, if you already have, like I said, the Sun Trio, you don't need the other one because they essentially are the same shade, but they are different in terms of skin needs. Now, even though, says, even though this has kaolin, I'm drier on the exterior and it doesn't feel dry either. This one does offer you like a variety of colors. There's three in there, um, whereas this is just the one. So it really kind of depends on what you want, but they are essentially the same shade on. And then the lipstick, I love this lipstick. Let me just add a little bit more. I so enjoy applying this, I think because 
this is so fancy, um, but it feels really nice on the skin. But it does feel really nice in terms of application. I'm trying to see, can I see particles? I mean, there is shimmer in there, just some slight shimmer. But I really enjoy using this. Again, one of the easiest colors for me to pull for. It always looks nice. Then these lovely meteorites. I like them for the evening. I still like them for the evening. They're not things that I would pull for daily because I can see it on my skin. Um, but it does have a nice ethereal look to it. But they are very special. So when I go to evening events, or when I did go to evening events, I could see when people had this on their skin, not in a bad way, but I could see that there was that ethereal aspect especially near dim light. Oh, this terracotta palette. I mean, it's nice. I don't love this blush. That's not my favorite blush in the world. The shimmer on's a little too visible. And when I start dealing with that in this area, you know what happens, it doesn't look good. So it looks nice over here though. And the highlighter is okay, but I just haven't been reaching for this one as much. I think I get more use out of the individual products than I do out of that palette. It was kind of fun to just go through the looks using some of my other favorite eye products as well. And then I'm glad I got to finally show you that Laura Mercier product that I added last year. I think it's really pretty. Um, doesn't irritate my eyes like the other color did. I loved the other shade. It just, it made my eyelids kind of itchy. And I noticed there was another color by Laura Mercier that was kind of like that mauvey light pink color that did the same exact thing. So I don't know what's in there, but there's something I'm allergic to. So I try and stay away from like pink colors that Laura Mercier does, but anything else seems to work really well. And that's it. So please take care of each other, stay well. And if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks.